Good evening. It is Wednesday, the 7th of October, 2020. This is our Wednesday evening video from Park Street Christian Church here in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. I'm going to share with you tonight about plagues and prayer. Plagues and prayer. We all know the last several months have been hard. And um, from what I can tell, even though I am not a prophet, I can't predict the future. I expect in some ways things will get somewhat easier, but in many ways, maybe in most ways, things are going to get um, a lot more difficult in the coming few months. Um, no matter how the election goes here in a little less than a month away. I guess a month yesterday. But I think we're in for some, some difficult times as a nation that might make the past six or seven, eight months uh, pale by comparison. I hope I'm wrong. But let me ask you, what's troubling you? What's humbling you? Where's the ache in your heart? What's the source? What are any physical needs going unmet? What's spurring you to worship God and give Him glory? Prayer is how God gives us a voice to pour out our hearts to Him, commune with Him, praise and worship Him, to give Him glory, to get our needs met, intercede for others, seek forgiveness, and usher the kingdom of God into human affairs. God is always online. He's always within range. He's always monitoring us. He's always answering our prayers. There's nothing for which we cannot pray, and there's nothing that God cannot do. This opens up everything as subjects for prayer, does it not? One of those subjects is a plague, or a synonym for pandemic. Now, very few of us had that word in our regular vocabulary until uh, March or April this year, I'm just guessing. There may be a few older folks who um, went through the Great Depression and maybe went through the polio outbreak uh, decades ago that remember what a pandemic is like compared to most of us. We don't have very much recollection of pandemics. Uh, but the Bible has a lot to say about plagues and prayer all the way back to the plagues of Moses. At the dedication of the first temple, Solomon knelt before God in front of the nation, interceded at great length for every imaginable scenario, wronging your neighbor, being defeated by your enemies, famines, and yes, even plagues. When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight, or mildew, locusts, or grasshoppers, or when enemies besiege them in any of our, their cities, Whatever disastrous disease may come, when a play, prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people, Israel, being aware of their afflictions and pains and spreading out their hands towards this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, Solomon prayed. Forgive and deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts, you alone know the human heart, he says, so that they will fa fear you and walk in obedience to you all the time they live in the land that you gave our ancestors. That's a portion, a small portion of Solomon's prayer recorded in Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 28 to 31. And God responded, answering Solomon's prayer with this instruction and promise in Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, which you know at least part of this. God responded, when I shut up the heavens so there's no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Notice that Solomon said, when a plague comes, not if a plague comes. We've heard a lot recently about the Spanish flu, which killed about 50 million or more of the 500 million people who contracted the virus, which was about one-fourth of the world's population in 1917 and 18. The Black Plague, the Black Death, killed more than 75 million people in the 14th century, making it the deadliest in human history. 
Even in recent history, we've battled polio, as I mentioned earlier. Smallpox, malaria is still a problem in parts of the world today. A big part, a big problem in many parts of the world today. We don't hear much about it in our Western culture, but it's a, it's a big plague. AIDS, of course, still is. The SARS virus, uh, Ebola in recent years and, and others. But plagues are unpredictable and they are inevitable. There have always been plagues pretty much ever since Adam and Eve's fall into sin in the Garden of Eden. Now, what can we do? Well, we all salute the brave men and women on the front lines fighting this plague and providing essential services medically, especially. Our hearts go out to all those who have suffered with the virus. We grieve for those who have died and the loved ones they leave behind and rem remind them that as Christians, precious is the, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Psalm 11, verse 15. And maybe you're in the midst of the fight, or maybe, like me, you're kind of watching on the sidelines. What can we do from the sidelines? Solomon said, I guess the only thing we can do is pray. Or someone said, only, I guess the only thing we can do is pray. Better to say, the thing we can do is pray. So let me give you some prayer points again. We've done this in different ways a uh, number of times the last few months since we started doing these videos back in April. But um, we can pray daily. Number one, pray daily. Begin every day with prayer. Oswald Chambers said, unless in the first waking moments of the day you learn to fling the door wide open and let God in, you'll work on the wrong level all day. But swing the door wide open and pray to your Father in secret and every public thing will be stamped with the presence of God. End of quote. So we should pray daily. We should also pray scripture. Pray scripture back to God. Several years ago, I began doing this when I was rehabbing from neck surgery when we lived in Tampa, Florida. And um, I couldn't lift anything over about five pounds. And... Um, I could walk, and I, my surgeon and the doctor said, yeah, it'd be great for you to walk, because the more you walk, the more the blood flows, and the more the blood flows, the quicker you heal. So I walked a lot, and I got to thinking, well, I need to do something else while I'm just walking twice a day for a couple hours each time. Um, I, can, I can pray. And so I started writing down prayers on index cards and scripture verses that I wanted to work on memorizing, plus use to pray back to God. So it's a good habit to get into. Pray scripture back to God. When a certain passage strikes you, quickens your heart, makes your heart burn in a good way, pray it back to God. But you can also add a highlight or note it or date it. I love praying the laments that you see in scripture, like Job 13, verse 15. This is, though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. And Jeremiah 20, verse 9 says, But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word in my heart is like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it. Indeed, I cannot. So I think it's important for us to learn to pray um, passages of Scripture back to God. I would also encourage you to pray for individuals when interacting with people. Ask them how you can pray for them. Pray for them on the spot. I think it's highly appropriate. You'll shock most people when you say, can I pray for you? And they say, well, sure. They don't expect you to pray right then. And there are some settings where maybe you can't. Um, it might cause too much of a distraction, but there are a lot of places, most places when you tell somebody you would like to pray for them, how can you pray for them? And they tell you what to pray about. Most of the time, I think we can stop and pray about that right then. And um, it will touch hearts when you do that. So I encourage you to do that. Pray for them on the spot, or if you tell them you're going to pray for them, make sure that you do. Write it down. Um, keep track of it. 
1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. All people. And he goes on to talk about those in authority. Kings, and we would say presidents, senators, representatives, governors. Um, we need to pray for these people uh, by name. I firmly believe that. And I've tried to practice that for many years, not just since all this has happened in the last few months. But recently, our governor here in Missouri and his wife both were diagnosed with COVID-19 um, just a few couple weeks before uh, President Trump and his wife, Melania, were also diagnosed with COVID-19. So, but we need to be praying for these people all the time anyway, even if things appear to be going well and there's not any plagues going on, there's not any riots going on. We still need to pray. God commands us to pray for people in authority, whether you voted for them or not. Uh, he says we're to pray. First of all, he says, I urge you that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. That's 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 uh, that's quite a command there, isn't it? So, but we need to pray for leaders, and we need to pray, continue to pray for healthcare providers, first responders. I know there was a lot of publicity about the need to do that a few months ago, but it's kind of leveled off. You don't hear a lot about that right now. But in some of the areas, like our mostly rural area that we live in, there's actually more stuff going on with COVID-19 than there was three, four, or five months ago. Um, as you might expect, of course, the cities, higher denser population, it spread quickly and um, not so much so here where um, we have 3,500 people in our town. And so there's been a few cases early on here, very few, but there's been a lot more in the last couple months. So we need to keep praying for the um, doctors and nurses and people like that, especially. So, but we also just need to pray about everything. That's a command in Ephesians 6, 18, um, you know, we're told, as I said before, there's nothing for which we cannot pray. There's nothing God cannot do. So as Ephesians 6.18, the first part of that verse says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So, and I think we should pray with fasting. I would encourage you to start a weekly day of fasting with prayer not fasting simply for diet's sake, though that might be beneficial in some ways. But as a Christian, I strongly believe that we need to practice regular fasting with prayer. Pick up a day, pick out a day that's best for you, your schedule. Uh, don't go on any prolonged fast, especially the older you are, without uh, medical approval without your doctor knowing about it, without you talking to them first to see if it's okay. I understand there are certain kinds of medicine that you can't take on an empty stomach, those kinds of things. But use common sense. But um, for me, um, I still drink water, drink coffee when I fast, but I don't eat any solid food for 24 hours at a time. So, Daniel 9 Verse 3 says, So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer, petition, in fasting, and in sackcloth and ashes. Now, I also encourage you to pray and journal your prayers. Now, for some of us, this is easier done than others. But um, I've done this in years past at times, prayed with a notepad, and wrote down a lot of the different prayers, and then dated them. Um, so I could go back later and see what, how God answered my prayers. That's one of the benefits of praying and journaling. Helps you remember the specific ways that God has answered prayers. But there are apps 
that people can use on their phones or tablets to do the same thing. Okay? Pray throughout the day. Um, saying one prayer is a little bit like eating one potato chip, you know. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice, always pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We can pray like Solomon. Go back and write down this reference, 2 Chronicles 6, 28 to 31. That's 2 Chronicles 6, verses 28 to 31 that I read earlier. And pray for healing. Pray over 2 Chronicles 7, verses 13 and 14. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. We know the 14th verse a lot more than the 13th verse, but read together, I think we should memorize and pray these that say, when I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. So those are some specific ways that we can we can pray. Okay? I'll just mention them again. Pray daily. Pray scripture. Pray for individuals. Pray for leaders, health care providers, and responders. Pray about everything. Pray with fasting. Pray and journal your prayers. Pray throughout the day. Pray like Solomon in 2 Chronicles 6. Verses 28 to 31, pray for healing. Um, as God responded to Solomon in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7, verses 13 and 14, are different ways that we can pray. So I'm going to pray as we close tonight. Father, thank you for the testimony of your word about plagues and prayer. Thank you for teaching us through the examples of uh, your Old Testament servants. Uh, very imperfect people, but people we can learn much from today. Your word tells us in the book of Romans in the New Testament that everything in the Old Testament, everything in the past was written for our, um, to serve as a warning to us, to serve to encourage us as we see how you answered prayer, as we see how you kept your promises to your people, uh, even promises of punishment. Speak to us today. We have your track record. We know what you're going to do how you're going to do it. When you tell us you're going to do something, you do it. So, Father, I pray right now that you'll continue to work in the hearts and lives of people in our church here, Park Street Christian Church, and the churches that are represented by the people who watch this, that there would be revival breakout in our nation. We desperately need it. When we think about the upcoming election, we think about all the ongoing battle Many people are fighting with COVID-19 yet. We think about all the turmoil in our cities, so many of our cities. Um, you can't watch a sporting event without, without uh, certain issues being brought up every time. And we need to learn from those things. But we pray, Father, that knowing that the real answer to all this is you and your word. and But it starts with us in the church, repenting and turning back to you and living as ambassadors of Christ, as salt and light in this rotting, dark culture we are in. Um, living with by faith, not by fear. Um, so help us, Father, to trust you you're not surprised by any of this. You weren't caught off guard by any of this that's going on in our world, in our nation, in our communities. And we trust you. We're depending on you. We need you. Our nation needs you. Our churches need you. Um, our president and his family and vice president and his family and the cabinet members, their families and all of their staff members and their spouses and children, they all need you. All of our senators and representatives need you. Um, in our states, our governors and lieutenant governors and senators and representatives, and they all need you. 
our mayor and city council members and police officers, law enforcement officers on every level uh, needs you. Our uh, FBI and CIA and all these different organizations desperately need you, need to find their way back to, to straight up truth. We pray for the Supreme Court nominee, Amy Coney Barrett. We pray for her family and what they're probably about ready to go through uh, with all this uh, stuff. We pray for your will to be done, uh, if your will for her to be confirmed um, before the election, then we pray that would happen, uh, whatever your will is. We pray for the election, and we pray for uh, tranquility, for the nonsensical rioting and needless destruction that is not helping anything um, to stop, that you'll just be in the middle of all this going on. This is way beyond our control or any president's control, any governor's control. Um, we've got to turn to you and depend on you. And we do so, Father. And I pray that on behalf of our nation tonight and our churches and our leaders. And I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.